Welcome to the Wilhelmi School of Organ Building and Rabbit Trails. And today we've got a pe peculiar challenge, and that is to change the action uh, on a cello. Okay? That means to bring the fingerboard closer to the strings. And that needs to happen in order to make it more playable. Okay? When you go into second position, if the action is too high, cut, cut, cut. You work too hard, okay? In third position, well, forget about it, you know, just leave it to the other guy. So, um, so that's the project. Let's get out the saw. I'm busy working on my own little bang around cello, and the action was too high, and to lower the bridge uh, would have uh, caused the bridge to be too light and therefore would have uh, negatively influenced the way that the cello plays the sound output because after all it's a cheapish cello and also it has survived a, a, a terrible leaking uh, roof in a storage unit where it ended up resting for two inch in two inches of water in its case and it survived so this is a tough tough old bird and I've got it already since I don't know 10 years something like this anyway but the action simply is too high that means uh, the higher I play the the more difficult it gets on the C string the bass it was just about uh, three millimeters too high and also on the A about three millimeters so uh, here I've I've cut a wedge out of maple wood from an old table leg, believe it or not, uh, that was already tapered. Uh, and it's um, 1.8 millimeters at the back uh, uh, of the heel, down to nothing, just about an inch and a half or four centimeters or so from the front, okay, from the nut. And uh, I took the fingerboard off Never mind that it's been made so tough and beautiful, this thing, uh, really. Um, the fingerboard and the nut were fitted with height glue. So I could remove it simply by using uh, a syringe with denatured alcohol and some little mahogany wedges. You see those? Here's the syringe, there's the hammer. Um, and I just tapped them in little by little, tup, 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 and it uh, and the alcohol broke down uh, the height glue and I could take it off very cleanly, very tidily. I just cleaned off the old adhesive and used liquid height glue to put my friend back in place. The reason is I, I used uh, the liquid height glue out of the bottle simply because it's a fingerboard, okay? And I know I can take it off again. So it's got nothing to do with the body or with swinging or something like this so that's good okay and then hopefully we'll have it raised high enough that our bridge will fit again into its location and uh, then we'll stick it back together and hopefully I'm going to have lots of joy playing my happy little instrument okay actually come to think of it I think I've got it more like 15 years or so Gosh, time flies when you're having fun. Anyway, this is our little evening project here. It just simply had to be done, okay? Because it keeps me back in enjoying my instrument and playing. Oh, by the way, you see, in order to line the fingerboard up again, uh, because my shim is wider than the fingerboard, I simply put... Uh, Two sticks on the side, mahogany sticks. I mean, one is mahogany, the other one is redwood or something. And um, that lines it up there. And in the front, because my wedge doesn't go all the way to the front, uh, here I simply put a clamp on. And those are, uh, they've got some nice rubber ends, so they won't damage the finish or anything. Okay. And we're going to leave this in the clamping position for at least 24 hours. I want this thing rock hard before we start putting it back together. Okay? 
and I simply calculated the thickness of the wedge uh, mathematically with simple geometry, what I needed uh, the action to be at the end of the fingerboard. Well, thank you for visiting and keep on making happy music. We've taken off the clamps. Okay. We've taken a hand saw, Japanese saw, if anybody wants to know, you know, one of the pull saws to cut off the excess of the maple wedge that I put underneath the fingerboard. Then took a nice sharp hand plane and planed it down. You can still see here the scuffy marks and here planed it down gently. So it needs a little bit of color touch up. And the maple wedge, by the way, is uh, 1.8 millimeters down here up to nothing up here. Okay, done on the table saw and refined a little bit and then put together. By the way, we put it together with height glue. This whole cool, extremely useful traveling cello that can even survive resting in two inches of water for several days without effects, <laughs> negative effects to the extremely peculiar sound. Um, nevertheless, the fingerboard was attached and therefore needs to be reattached with height glue, so it is reversible. Okay, and I was extremely grateful, A, that the cello survived uh, floating about. It's a so floating device. I've also used it in my, in my canoe, uh, as such. So, but the certain parts that there's a possibility to uh, adjust it, do major adjustments, they need to be fitted with high glue. Okay, now what we have achieved is we've actually changed the action, the string height from uh, from the string, or from the fingerboard to the string, that used to be, can you believe, it? that used to be for years 12 millimeters. Ouch! Okay, 12 millimeters here, and I think it was 11 millimeters here or something. It was just crazy. So forget about me ever advancing beyond playing six notes. Okay, I thought it was me. <laughs> Well, I actually, it still is, but anyway. Uh, <clears throat> so, and we have, with the fitting of the wedge underneath here, can you, can you guys see that wedge? Can you, let me bring this close to you guys. See the wedge, see the wedge. Up to nothing. That's why I didn't uh, cover up the, uh, the coloration yet, so that you can actually see the wedge, okay? And with doing that, you can see the wedge also, I think, underneath the fingerboard there, okay, going all the way across. Okay. And with that, we have achieved a, an action height of 8.5 millimeters on the C-string and 5.7 millimeters oops, on the A-string. On the A-string is the skinny guy here, okay? So, and now I'm happy. Now I can go explore further. So this was cool. The only drawback is that my very expensive, I think it was Scand Scandinavian string, Northern European string, it broke for the second time when I restrung it. But anyway, one of these days I'm going to actually invest and get another A string. If you have a, <clears throat> a cello of this quality, I tell you the strings, what strings you put on are extremely important. Okay? Extremely important. Okay? And I had to do the action uh, the, the fingerboard raising, yes, I had to do the uh, fingerboard raising because the other way to lower the action would be messing with the bridge and that uh, affects the whole uh, transfer of sound energy onto the top and into the instrument and that was just not desirable. Okay, so now we can make music or at least strive to keep the mice 
and the birds within your shop at bay. Chase them away. There's one. See, there's one cute little mouse. Yeah. Goods, 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 goods. I like that guy. Thanks for watching and visiting with us at the Wilhelmi School of Organ Building and Rabbit Trails. Thank you.